was a big on Pastor Kirian Umba. My heart consumed my life with your love, with your love. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. It's that simple. Would you sing it? You have captured my heart. You have captured my heart. Consumed my heart. Consumed my heart with, with your love. Sing it again. With your love. Oh, you have captured my heart. Consumed. If all I can say is Jesus, if all I can say is Jesus, 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 it's more than enough. It's more than enough. If all I say is Jesus, 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 it's more than Father, we thank you because you're here today. We'll bless your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift your hands, just worship him. Father, thank you because you're in this place and you change our lives forever by the power of your word. We give you the praise. Clap your hands and give God praise today. Thank you, guys. Well, go to as many people as possible before you sit down and tell them you're in for a wonderful time this morning. You have the word coming from God. Come on, tell somebody your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. Such a privilege to be here today. Um, was a great time at the mainland church in the two services. We had such a time. And I'm excited to come out here to be with you and I celebrate my friends and mentors, Pastor Kingsley and Mildred Okonkwa. Would you please just celebrate great visionaries of this great work and I'm excited that what God is doing with DCC is touching the city, is touching the nations and you are part of what God is doing. Look at someone and say you are part of something great. Well, I'm excited because every time I get an opportunity to speak at DCC, it's always a platform to speak beyond DCC into the city. And I'm excited that the word that God's brought today, or is bringing you today, is a word that will reposition you, change your mindset, and position you to be uh, a soul winner, a missionary believer, an apostolic Christian. Amen. It's a season of uh, uh, soul carnival, carnival, I hear. And it's a season of reaching out to more people and just being an extender of the message of the gospel. Look at someone and say, God is going to bless you beyond your thinking this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are we ready for God's word? Okay. Uh, I'll be reading from Luke's gospel, chapter 5, from verse 1. To 11. If you stand with me for the reading of God's word, I know you've been standing for a bit, but let's just honor God's word as we read that passage of scripture. Luke's gospel, chapter 5, from verse 1 up unto 11. Standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats. Look at someone say, Jesus is about to get into your boat. You didn't believe it, that's why you said it that way. Look at someone other person and say, Jesus is about to invade your boat. 
Oh, yes. Uh, he saw two boats standing and he got into one of the boats. And in verse 3, he said, uh, 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 which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a big catch, for a great catch. Look at someone and say, you're about to have a big catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, can we read on? We have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when he had done this, they came, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon saw it, he fell down on Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were with partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now you will catch men. So when they had brought the, their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. This is a story of a man who was in fishing business and uh, he had toiled all night and by morning uh, he found out that it was not a good business day now this was a particular body of water where you don't fish during the daytime because it was transparent so the fishermen would uh, leverage on darkness to, to 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 go in there to fish through the night but this was a particularly bad business day for peter and then he met Jesus, and Jesus changed the dynamics of doing business. So I want to use for, the, for my subject this morning, now you are in business. Go to three people and say, now you are in business. Oh, you're not helping me, DCC Island, come on. Look at someone and say, now you are in business. Now you're in business. You thought you're a fisherman. You thought you knew all the strategies. You, you thought you know how to catch fish. But I'm about to surprise you. I'm about to give you a net breaking catch. Oh, who is it I'm preaching to right now? I'm about to give you the kind of harvest of fish that you will need partners. Your net will not be able to carry it. You need a network. You didn't get what I said. When your net start breaking, you don't need a net any longer. You need a network. God is saying, what I'm about to do for you, you'll be able to hide it. What I'm about to do in your life, you need partners. You need more people to come and join you, harvest what God is about to do to you, do in your life. Who is it I'm preaching to right now? Go to three or four people and say, now you are in business. Come on, help me somebody. Preach to somebody. I say, God is about to use you. He's about to bless you beyond your, beyond your imagination. He's about to transform your thinking and show you a superior way of doing business. Thank you, Father. Change this people, oh God, by your word. Release that anointing that transforms the people and empowers them to become missionary in their thinking. I give you the praise, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Now, just on your way to your seat, look at someone by your side and say, now you are in business. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, by business, I mean everything you engage in. By business, I mean everything you, you do for a living, everything uh, that consists from your talents, your potentials, your platforms, your, your passions, your, the, the grace of God upon your life, your abilities. Uh, by business, I'm talking about everything you do to engage life and engage humanity. Everything you are doing to, uh, uh, to go ahead and to add value uh, to life I, I absolutely believe that Jesus' assignment to us as the church is to occupy until he comes oh I didn't get an amen, amen. I brought my amen from the mainland church I said God wants you to occupy until he comes and uh, the book of Luke chapter 19 verse 13 he said occupy and one translation the, the uh, 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 you know English standard version says engage in business until I come there is a kind of church that God is raising just before Jesus returns. It is a church that will engage the world. Oh, did you hear what I just said? It's a church that will go where the conversation really is. 
It's a church that will invade territories and occupy territories for Jesus. Whether they are physical territories or sociological territories or, or sectors and, and the various mountains that define human culture. Look at someone and say, I'm part of that generation that will invade the nations. Now, if you just want to be a nice Christian, this message is not for you. If you just want to be a bless me, bless me Christian, this message is not for you. But if you're building something, if you're, if you're part of the kingdom of God, and you know your life counts for more than just attending church on a Sunday morning in a nice air-conditioned facility, and you know there's something to your life that must touch the nations. If you're the person God sent me to, shout, and you're talking to me, pastor, you're talking to me. My God, all these island people, see them looking and just crossing their legs. Is there anybody that wants to make an impact? Is there anybody that wants to change their world? Is there anyone that wants to go into government, entertainment, media, the educational world, and cause a difference for Jesus? Hallelujah. Is there anyone that's sick and tired of just looking for a miracle? You want to become the miracle the walking miracle is anyone who wants to see the power of god expressed through your life monday to saturday beyond sunday morning i'm talking about you carrying this gospel beyond the upper room to the boardroom This is upper room, you know. This is where we experience the Holy Ghost as a community. This is where we experience the power of God. The lighting is good. The song is great. The clapping is great and all that. That's Pentecost right here in the upper room. But he was not, he didn't design for us to remain at the upper room. He said you shall go from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I don't know about you. I'm going to the ends of the earth. I said, I don't know about you. My life is going to touch lives beyond my physical geography, my life, my business. Everything I'm building is global. I got a few yeses. I got a few amens. Uh, and maybe all you want to touch is lucky, all you lucky people. Maybe all you want to touch is just people around Lagos. Maybe all you want to do is just have a local business. But there's a business God is building. There's, a, there's an organization God is tearing up here. There's a ministry rising up from this place uh, that will touch Nigeria, touch West Africa, touch Sub-Saharan Africa, touch the nations of the earth. If you're the one God sent me to shout, I'm touching the nations. The church must become engaging. We must become a people who know how to infiltrate systems and change culture. We must redefine culture. We must become people who know how to shine a light in the dark world. Light is not meant to shine in light. Talk to me now. Light is meant to shine in darkness. The beauty of light is when you surround it with darkness. The beauty of light is when you place it in the midst of darkness. Our world is, is experiencing darkness. Didn't the scripture say that darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people? Listen to me. Young people are in darkness. Our unrighteousness is ravaging our world as we speak. But I decree and I declare that the light of the world is rising from the church. And you are the light of the world. If you're not the light, sit there and look at me like a preacher boy. But if you are the light of of the world go to five people and say check me out i'm about to shine my god my god my god my god my god i'm shining in the marketplace i'm shining in the media get on that keyboard you need to help me right now i'm about to shine arise shine for your light has come the glory of the lord is risen upon you do i have anybody that's getting ready to shine he said let your light so shine I need to get your attention. Let your light so shine that men may see. If men are not seeing it, you are not shining. I shine. I shine. I like that. I like that. Let's hashtag, let's hashtag it. Let's tweet it. Let's do something with it. Go to five and say, I shine. I shine. My God, my God, my God. Some people are sitting down. They are very wrong. They are ve I said very, very wrong. Go and take a... Uh, come on now. Take a walk. Look at us I shine. I shine in the darkness. I shine in this world. I am an expression of the light of God. Yeah! Do I have anybody who is ready to shine? Shout, I shine! 
your neighbor may not like the, like the fact that you're taking it too far, but that devil is a liar. I want you to get out of your seat, run to at least three people and tell them I didn't come to be bold, I didn't come to be covered. I'm it's my season of shining. It's my season of shining. Hey, you are about to shine in your industry. You are about to shine in your family. You are about to shine in your community. Who is it I'm preaching to? Shout, I shine. Yeah. Sit for a while. We must understand that our mandate as a church is to go into all the world, all the nations, and disciple the nations. Our assignment is not just to show up in church and have a good church party. As much as the party is over, you've got to understand that you've got to enter into every sphere and make a difference for Jesus. We must take this gospel into the government house. You didn't hear what I said my god some of you don't believe it uh, the national cake is not for the devil we bake it in church and we, oh, you didn't hear what i said that devil is a liar this is the only country where people want to bake want to eat a cake they've not baked you didn't hear that that god is going to raise you up as a daniel and you'll enter into government who is it i'm talking to god is going to raise you up as an esther you are coming you are coming i'm talking about you you are coming you are coming i'm talking about you yes god is going to raise you up he didn't save you and set you free and sanctified you just so that you sit around here there's work to be done i said there's work to be done souls are waiting for the manifestation nations are waiting multitudes are waiting we must take this thing that we carry we must invade government we must teach we must teach the world how to govern how to lead how to administrate how to legislate how to execute law and order am i talking to anybody in here he said out of zion shall comfort the law church is not just where you come to have a social guard it's called where you come to be equipped for life this is a boot camp you thought you just got born again. No, you got recruited into an army. No, I got only one yes. And it was a civilian yes. I want some military yes, sir. See them looking at me. I want some yes, sir. I said, well, you got born again. You got recruited into the army of the Lord. You are an invading army. You're part of a generation that will be trained by God, agreed by God to invade territories like the drill army. Before you is a forest. Behind you is a desert. Am I talking to anybody in here? You will not break ranks. You will take over. Somebody shout, yes, sir. I see you have some civilians in there. Somebody shout, yes, sir. See them sitting down and shouting, yes, sir. Shout, yes, sir. You are going to the nation. Shout, yes, sir. You are taking territory. Shout, yes, sir. The government is ready for you. Shout, yes, sir. The entertainment world is ready for you. Shout, yes, sir. Yeah. So I said, by now, by now you should know that you're not going to cease throughout this service. Look at so I say, by now you should know. You've been sitting down, it has not helped Nigeria. You've been sitting down, it has not helped Lagos. God is about to cause a generation to stand up, stand up for Jesus. You soldiers of the cross, lift up his royal banner. He shall not suffer loss from victory unto victory. His army shall he lead to every foe. His choir vanquished and Christ is won. In this summer shall yes sir. Our churches must become boot camps and not just places for feeding babies. It's okay to come in as a baby, but after three years, you shouldn't be. <laughs> we shouldn't be sending you text message to come to church. I got a few yes sirs. We shouldn't bring a celebrity before you come to church after three years of being born again. <laughs> we shouldn't cajole you after three years of being born again you shouldn't leave church because an usher did not greet you well I got a few soldiers in here 
offended. You shouldn't leave church because you were offended. To be offended is to be taken off end. You didn't hear what I said. Do I have any soldiers in here today? You shouldn't be coming to church just because the church is air conditioned. The what if it's not air conditioned? You check your pastors online and be sure his tie tie is good and all that. No, no, no. You get recruited. There's a new generation rising up. They are warriors in the spirit. They are ladies who don't just make up. They make people up. You didn't hear what I said. There's a generation rising. These guys are not just guys with tricep, biceps, and muscular bodies. They know how to engage the devil at the war, at the at the battlefront. They know how to pray. They know how to lift up holy hands. They are tall, dark, and handsome, but they are terrorists to the devil. Somebody shout yes, sir. Sit for a while. My God, you're getting it right now. Yes, sir. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your purpose. Yes to your plan. Yes to your way. We cannot be sitting around in church and just doing church services. Hollywood is taking over a generation. MTV is taking over a generation. You can't just sit here and be a nice girl. Come on, talk to me right now. Politicians who don't know Jesus are making policies and forming policies. Are, are, are doing stuff that will affect your children. Am I talking to somebody in here? Educators who don't have spirit, who don't have the Holy Ghost. Gay people are taking over the educational system. You can't sit here and just do Sunday school. We can't just sit here and add drama in church when Nollywood is, is literally determining the culture. We must go from the church to the nations. You didn't hear what I said. I said we are going from the church to the nations. Come on, is there anybody under the sound of my voice who understands that the nations are waiting for you? Who understand that you are, you are about to change things? We will sing in church, but we will sing, we will sing out there, we will sing on MTV, we will sing, am I talking to anybody in here? We will sing in church, that will be heard Monday to Saturday on the radio stations. We will not just only organize nice programs in church, we will teach the world how to administrate. The world will come to us and they will take our protocol guys and say, come and teach us how to handle mega logistics. Are you guys getting what I'm saying? That's where we're headed. We are choice souls. We are supposed to be people who live, who live by a different standard. We're supposed to be aliens. You didn't hear what I said. I should look somewhere in your face and look somewhere really deep and I don't know you in the flesh I know you by the cross you didn't hear what I said that's on your you didn't hear what I said uh, there's got to be a blood sign on you a mark of Christ on you I've got to be able to engage you for five minutes and I sense you are my brother am I talking to anyone in here Gideon get to this message come on Ooh. We're engaging people. So if we're going to engage the world, we must understand that Jesus wants us to give him platforms through our lives. That's all I'm trying to say this morning. Uh, upon which he will touch the nations, through which he will touch the nations. So Peter had a boat. Jesus needed to reach a multitude of people. And Peter had a boat that Jesus needed to use. And it, it, it's, it's interesting how that Jesus will ask for a boat for a stage. How did Jesus who asked for a boat for a, for a pulpit? Talk to me right now. You don't use boats for preaching. You use it for fishing. Come on now. Okay, so this guy was a business guy doing his business. He was into fishing and all that. And he thought he was in business. He didn't understand that real business begins when your business becomes Jesus' pulpit. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm getting there now. I'm getting there right now. He didn't understand that real business begins. Real business begins when what you thought was your business is actually Jesus' stage. What you thought was your gift, your ability, your degrees like the thermometer. 
your, your exposure, your expertise and your experience. And God is saying, I want to sit on it to teach the world how to do life. So God is saying there's a new dimension, a next dimension of preaching and teaching in this nation. We've had a, a great time where people came to church and received miracles. I sense we are entering a new season where people are, go from, are going to go from the church and do miracles. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. They're going to do boardroom miracles. They're going to do crazy stuff. You didn't hear what I just said. Ordinary people will heal the sick on Tuesday evening when Pastor K is not there. Am I talking to anybody in here? There will be several kinds of miracles that will happen through your life. We'll take that supernatural life into government. We'll take that supernatural life into the educational world. Let them know there's a superior intelligence. There's a diff there's superior curriculum. The Bible said the church will teach the nations. He said they shall come to us and say, teach us the ways of your God. You know who should be writing the curriculum in this state? You know who should be determining what our children learn? It is you. The church must become the place where we, we, we understand that we're meant to engage and become people who will impact the religious world and let the world know that there's no other God except the God whose name is Christ Jesus. We need to engage media and begin to let the media world know that there's a set of people who can accurately manage news and not manipulate it for politicians. I'm getting a few ums. People who know how to give good news, who know how to use news right to change culture, to, to do the right to care to entertain and to, and to inspire. Those people are rising in this place. There are media gurus rising in this place. These kind of people are, are born from the house of God. They will not just give breaking news, they will give making news. We must take this thing beyond here and go into the family sector and let the world know that God did not create Adam and Steve. It's like I have some people who are who have different orientations sexually here. I said God did not create Adam and Steve. He created Adam and Eve. My God, my God, I didn't get any amens. I didn't get it. Come on now. You think you were born? You were born homosexual. Listen to me. That's what you think. You were born in the image of God. We love you, but I want you to know this is the season for you to understand that there's much more to you than just thinking that you have that demonic orientation. We love you, but we want to see you change. The church must begin to redefine family. I got a few amens. I'm looking for my amen. Nollywood will not tell us what family is. Uh, uh, dictionaries will not even tell us what family is now. You go to some dictionaries and tell you family is the union between any two people. Cartoons are being used right now. Different things are being used to, to, to literally change culture. But that devil is a liar. God created the family to be a man and a woman. Parenting, parenting children and bringing them up, sharing them in the ways of God. I declare and I declare from the church, we will redefine family. You didn't hear what I said. Marriage is good. It is good because it is from God. It's like I'm old school. See how they are looking at me. I said marriage is good and it can work. Unreconcilable differences. Where did you get that from? My, the generation of my parents, you reconcile it. We have a generation right now that is discontented. They are never able to, no allegiance, no ability to stay through a relationship. But God is saying the church will rise up and redefine family. Some of you were raised in that home single parents fathers who were not fathers mothers who were not there but the bible says as a generation rising up who will redefine things and that generation is an invading generation that generation will stand by the word for in the beginning it was not so am i preaching to the right church this year So we have celebrities who have told us you have to have what they call it mama babies or something babies or baby mamas and it's a culture 
That devil is a liar. Pastor Kingsley and Mildred are the standard. Those of us who have served the Lord are the standard. Am I talking to anybody in here? We are the standard. The church is the standard. Am I talking to anybody in here? If you're not ready to get married, shut down. If you don't have direction, you don't need direction. Stop allowing Nollywood and Hollywood and all the woods determine what you call relationship. Now you're living with a guy that is not your husband. That devil is a liar. And his mother-in-law. It's like I need to go. Some people are looking at me and say, where did Pastor K bring this guy from? Who is this person? You know you are? That devil is a liar. I came to announce uh, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having been sealed. The Lord knows them that are his. Let everyone that names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. You will get it right. You will marry the right person. You will build the right homes. Your children will grow up in the knowledge of God. Somebody shout, yeah! yeah. Sit for a while. Lord, help me. We must take this gospel into every sphere. We must build stuff. We must use our boats. Our boat, your boat is your potential, your skill, your abilities, your credentials, your professional career.